And then last, Trinitarian doctrine sets Christianity apart from any other faith commitment, right? Muslims, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Unitarians, and other uh, religious groups who um, who claim to worship God, they don't worship the God proclaimed by the scriptures, the testimony of the apostles, and the witness of the early church. And this is a big sticking point. Let me interject. Those other Christian groups who say that the Bible doesn't teach Trinity, and yet they still want to worship the God of the Bible, how do you think the God of the Bible would feel if they are actually not giving him full credit where he has already revealed himself? It's much like, it could be analogous to, rabbinic Judaism says, well, we, we believe in God, we worship God, but we reject Jesus. Well, Christians understand that this rejection of Jesus is actually an insult to the God that they claim to worship because in so in rejecting Jesus, you're not giving God the authority and credit for bringing his son into the world and into the lives of those religious Jews who actually need to have a relationship with God. They're, they're actually thumbing their nose at God's choice of Messiah. They're actually rejecting God by saying, we reject your Messiah. Well, then let's kind of apply that similarly, not whole. We, we can just carte blanche apply this to the Christian groups that I'm referring to, like such as Unitarians. It's a little bit more nuanced, but there could be some similarities in our discussion about if, in fact, God is Trinity, which I believe he is, and we have ample scripture to demonstrate this, then how does that reflect on their belief in God and their acceptance of a God, but yet in a limited form. Is that really acceptance of God? Is that really a true belief in God by rejecting those parts of that God has already revealed about himself? Well, you know, we could talk about that. But let me finish. This quote goes on to say, unless the God you worship is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, then you worship a false God. It's pretty harsh. The early church vigorously fought for the Trinitarian theology in the wake of multiple waves of heresy. And we should continue to contend for it today. And that's uh, really a good place to kind of stop and reflect on this idea of Trinity. Is God important enough in your life that you would consider bringing in aspects of God that you don't fully comprehend or understand, right? Is God... Um, is what what is what does Doctor Tucky's uh, podcast say? Uh, do you love God enough to think about Him? I, I'm I'm really impacted by that um, that tagline. Uh, his podcast. Do you love God enough to think about Him? Because it's a podcast all about thinking about God. It's a podcast all about engaging and encountering God, not just with our emotions, which are good but to engage God with our intellect, which is also good. God created our intellect, and so let's think about God. And so in closing tonight, and we'll pick this up in two weeks, let's just remind ourselves that God is the one who reveals himself in Scripture. God is the author of Scripture. And so if God reveals himself a certain way, even if we can't fully comprehend it, we nevertheless would do well to app uh, we can't apprehend it but we would do well to affirm it we would do well to um um accept that this is the god we serve as mysterious as it is we yield we yield we can't fully comprehend we can't understand you god we can't even articulate you um but your words are true and they're trustable and reliable and therefore you would never give us something that would harm us and so we thank you for the revelation that is the word of god and we will continue to look there for our understanding of who you are and that'll do it for exploring the shema discussions on the issues of trinity